All right, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. Today, Games Matter features Shuchimi, and I'm here with the developers Garrett, well, two of the developers, Garrett and Anthony of Neon Deity Games. Uh, and I suppose you guys are more qualified than me to say what this game is about. Um, I'll handle it. So, Shoot Shimi is a game. It's a uh, 10 second wave side scrolling shooter based around the myth that a goldfish has a 10 second memory. So, uh, the game plays around that 10 second theme with just about everything it does. So, you have 10 seconds to change your wardrobe or get on some sweet shades? Yeah, so hats are a huge component in the game, and it's one of the many power ups we have. Uh, they can affect the game in all sorts of ways. Like you mentioned, the shades, they can obscure your vision. But then there's other power-ups, like um, a special hairdo that makes you more powerful. You might even say it makes you go super salmon. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, obviously, Shoot Simi doesn't take itself too seriously. Did not kind of being very po-faced, especially when you have a story about a fish with bodacious muscles make development more enjoyable? I would say so. Um, a lot of the uh, methodology behind like what went into the game came down to does it make us laugh? So we'll spitball ideas all the time and if we just end up on a tangent on something that we find particularly funny or if we just get hit with a bit of inspiration out of nowhere um, we'll, we'll talk to each other and try and work out how can we get this in the game. Does it does it belong in the universe? Uh, that's usually a yes, because not a lot of stuff does not fit when you don't have any strict requirements. Were we not telling people that we hoped to win the Nobel Peace Prize with the story yet? Or is that something we're still keeping quiet? <laughs> yeah, Garrett, Garrett I'm, nailed it, I'm though. Uh, we definitely... the puns. What's that? I was going to respond with a pun, but I'm coming up blank. <laughs> That's actually rare for us. Uh, Garrett hit it on the head, though. If it made us laugh, it basically made it, made it in. And generally, if somebody suggested something and it was deemed hilarious enough for us, uh, we, we tried really hard to make it work. Very few things didn't make it in that we conceptualized um, at the time of development. That's not to say we don't still have ideas, but every time somebody came up with something, we tried very hard to make sure it got in there. That's awesome. And right now, we, I just saw Slug Cats, which is another indie. And especially speaking as someone who um, a lot of indie developers are like, wow, I want to work with this or this or that. How did that, how did that partnership work out? Um, so I actually did do some work on Rain World, um, but James Therian, he's one of the... Jared, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Make sure you yep. press the uh, action button with this hat on when you're, when you're in the round, if you have the Fez still. Oh, with the Fez? Oh, oh you died. Oh, disappointing. <laughs> So I'm sorry! Some of, hats, some of the hats have action buttons. If you see a little star above the fish's head when you swim on, that means you can use the... Is it the Z button, Garrett? It'll be the Z button, yeah. Yeah, you can Z use Z to... <laughs> Garrett's showing us Canadian colors. Um, you can press the Z or Z button, depending on where you're from, and you'll do a special attack. So like the slug cat, for example, that you had, he would jump up and attack enemies. Oh, wow. That's pretty dang awesome. It's so something when that's a hat... communicated a little better on consoles due to the button logo being there. We're still trying to maybe figure out a way to make it a little more obvious on the PC. I think the fix is coming in 1.02 for that, right, Garrett? Uh, in the PC, it's not really 102. It's like build 105 or something. But okay. Yeah, it's the next one that's coming out. Okay. So you'll see um, a little bubble above the fish's head that says, like, press the special button. And that'll tell you that that's a hat that um, does something fancy when you press the button. So I apologize. You... I, <laughs> I was just gonna say Garrett was talking about Rainworld before I rudely interrupted. Yeah, so Rainworld in particular, like I, I did do, like I said, I did do some work on it, and I got into that because of um, a friend of mine, James Therian, who's like a designer for it. Uh, he and I got talking back and forth about that kind of thing, and um, our game is written with the same sort of engine that Rainworld was made with, which is um, it's like a scripting plugin for Unity called Feudal. Oh, cool. 
so we we have some some overlapping uh, technology expertise on that stuff, and I don't actually remember specifically how we got into the talks about um, like partnering up on that, but we did um, think it would be great if we had a, a slug cat hat in the game because personally I wanted to um, try my hand at the procedural generation that is so rampant in Rain World, and that's why Rain World looks as amazing as it does. All the animation is procedural. So the slug cat in this game, um, his tail will swing based on your movements and based on like his momentum and stuff. And Just so like I in the actual do, game. Yeah, and I wanted to try doing something like that. So I said, hey, well, can we do a uh, slug cat? in the game and he was just like yeah sure go for it and right now I'm bouncing in a bouncy house are we going to see a bouncy <laughs> house in rain world is that the partnership <laughs> um, if you're looking for muscular fish in rain world um, I'd have to talk to you are about that but I'm not convinced that it wouldn't fit in that crazy world full of ridiculous creatures that want to devour you. I will say that there's a lot of water in that game and we should probably talk to them about possibly having a beefy fish swimming around in the water somewhere. What could be better? Two beefy fish. That's about pretty, pretty, pretty easy there. So it was as easy as saying, hey, you're doing a cool thing. I can help you out. More or less. We tend to um, try and dip our toes in things like that when it looks like uh, something that we can we can help out with and something that we're particularly excited about. And uh, Rain World happened to be one of those things that I'd been following since I saw um, GIFs posted of it randomly. And then when I found out James was working on it, I started talking to him more and more about the game. That's awesome. So, some of the other the other appearances was just a matter of just like we have an idea that the hat fits well into the game here's our design for this hat would you be okay if we did this like added your character to our game kind of deal what's funny about that is it's actually one of the main reasons why we have the publishing deal we do with choice provisions because I initially asked Alex if we could have commander video in the game as a hat and then because I've known Alex for years and um, we got chatting about the game and he was like oh I'm not familiar with what it is let me take a look and then he had a big laugh about it and then we got to talking about publishing and that just kind of you know like you know kind of rolled downhill from there. As a side note, your fish is currently thinking about a shotgun. That's not supposed to happen. That's another one of the things that we're fixing for the next update. So he's thinking about a shotgun. I was just seeing that as like, that's his secret desire. And if you kind of, if you when fulfill you have... that desire, then you can initiate the um, shoot shimmy romance scenes. <laughs> That's actually not how you unlock those scenes, but um, in this particular case, you're supposed to have a redneck hat, and he just he just thinks about things that he likes, such as his hat, or his shotgun, or his truck. Um, but when you die, it's supposed to go away, and it doesn't. So I think that's probably going to stay there until you get another hat. It will stay there until he gets another hat, or I think he might be able to get it to go away if he resets out completely, but you don't want to do that. Yeah. So, Shoot Shimi, uh, it was initially a, a built-in XNA, so what is it built in now? Uh, Unity, um, using this plugin called Feudal, and what Feudal does is it basically lets you make a game in Unity strictly through C-sharp uh, scripts, so I was in like a transition phase between XNA and Unity, because they're so different, but I wanted to make something quick, because we originally made this game for a game jam, and I didn't have the time to like learn an entire new development environment. Um, so I kind of like found a middle ground in Feudal. And that's interesting because I hear from some developers that developing games that you previously built in a, in a game jam can have unexpected effects like making the development process a little bit more difficult because you know you're you're used to always developing it in a sort of high pressure environment um, where you're just quickly just adding stuff whereas the actual fi actually finishing a game is often just focusing getting your head down and focusing on building something yeah and that's kind of rampant all over um, Shuchimi's code base so because it was made um, 
in a game jam, I ended up having to remake a lot of the systems because you can either do it fast or you can do it well. It's that old uh, triangle of fast or good. Yeah. And so it was like, we'll get something that works as quickly as possible, and then I will just deal with it months from now if we, for some reason, decide to spend the next two years working on this. So how long has Shuchimi been in development? Two years. Almost wow. exactly. We're, we're a, a couple weeks after two years now. The launch of the game was probably one day past the year mark from the date of inception. Two years. Oh. So two years and one day was when it launched on, I think, PS4, Vita, and Steam. How does it feel to have your game on a Sony console? Uh, I don't know for sure, because I actually don't have either of them. <laughs> I can tell you that um, when I got a code before release to, to test it out and like make sure everything was good, I booted it up and it was... It was a little surreal, because, like, I mean, before when we had it on Xbox Live Indies, it was cool, and I was proud, but um, that, that always felt so much more accessible, but to have it on, like, the full, real marketplace, it was... I took a moment to appreciate it. One of the things I wanted to... Uh, one of the things I was excited for was having it on a portable system, which is something that you get with the Vita version. But the dev kit I have, um, the battery on it is just dead, so it's not portable. Oh. So I still haven't gotten that yet. And that's strange. Like, I, you kind of see the same thing with um, developers who have very difficult games. Like, when you can't play a game in the environment that a lot of your players are, or that, um, or you just can't play it, period or you're worse at the game than your actual players, that's always an interesting situation to be in, having actually made it. I feel like there's a bit of an advantage to that, because you appreciate the difficulty more, whereas for this game, we have played this game for hundreds and hundreds of hours throughout its development, so we're all really good at it. I'm bad at shoot 'em ups but I'm really good at this game. So I can't appreciate whether something's too difficult or too easy, because for me it's just too easy all the time. We so, did a lot of uh, we did a lot of tweaking the difficulty over the course of the two years because because of the aforementioned, you know, we're also good at it. But it's really come down a lot since the original few versions in terms of how hard it is. And it's weird to go back and play those earlier versions and remember, oh yeah, we really did change a lot of stuff. Because even now, people still tell us, like, oh, it's a little too hard. And we're like, really? And, and that's interesting, just how, like, kind of the reality of sometimes players can get distorted. And, oh, poop, it's left. Everything's switched. <laughs> so, you got the upside-down camera, didn't you? Yes. As you said, um, when you have a game that... Was that a cat? There's plenty of cats, so I'm just going to say yes, even though we're about 20 seconds was in, behind. Was he in a submarine? Yes, he was in a submarine. That, is that a um, reference to Aqua Kitty DX? Unintentionally. It's a game that Wayne and I played uh, when it came out on Xbox Live Indies a long time ago, and I don't think we intentionally put it in, but we, we can't deny that we were aware of it because the game is pretty fun. So um, I, I hope know they yeah, I was gonna say, I don't... their... Uh, an intentional shout out. Yeah, Wayne wanted to put a cat in the game, and I thought it would be like super cute if like the cat was just in a cat-shaped sub. So wait, if this is all based on like real life, those are actual bears. Bears are in the ocean these days. Oh, bears have been in the ocean for a while. Gosh dang it! You don't get out much, do you? I try not to get into the ocean when there are bears in it. That's that, that's yeah, my general policy. Yeah, that's that's uh, good. Good. I can't really blame you for that. So, when you're talking about humor in a game, how do you decide, and, like, it's, it's shooting is supposed to be kind of random and silly. How do you decide what kind of crosses the line? Uh, in terms of, like, just too esoteric or too pandery, uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you have a screen filled with, I'm in the butt level where there's butts with surfboards? So, I don't imagine there's much 
that is there. off the table, but what is off the table or just unbalanced or just didn't fit the game in that kind of...